Good morning, my name is Lauren Lynch and I am a student at St. Petersburg High School and I am in the AP Environmental class. My weather question is, what are trade winds? The answer is not a resort in, oh. in Tampa Bay, by the way. Here, well, <laughs> that, it is. I guess that's true. That that, that, technically, that, that, that is true. That's true. Uh, but he, here's, what, here's what she's talking about. All right, the trade winds. Let's talk about this. The global scale here, some, uh, some earth wind circulations here. We're talking about 30 degrees north, 30 degrees south, those latitudes there. And then we've got the equator. So we've talked about this before, how wind blows from high pressure to low pressure. There's a natural occurring area of high pressure right along 30 degrees north and 30 degrees south. So wind blows from high to low pressure. At the equator, there's a constant area of low pressure. And so you have these winds blowing from high to low, but because the Earth spins on its axis, the Coriolis force forms or the Coriolis effect and that causes this apparent force for those winds to slant in the northern hemisphere they curve to the right in the southern hemisphere they curve to the left and that's what creates those easterly winds from 30 degrees north to the equator you have the winds slanting to the west and we call those the easterlies because the winds blow from east to west so let's talk about why this is called trade winds back in the early centuries this helped ships navigate across the Atlantic from east to west and the origin of the word trade is track or route. So the Portuguese actually recognized how important this was in transiting across the Atlantic Ocean to more efficiently and quickly get across to help with the trades and still even today they use those easterly winds or those trade winds to get ships across the Atlantic.